Well, she was given two years to live. <laughs> Ten years ago, Diana Burgess is on the line to tell us how courage took her through what was to be the last two years of her life. Emile Steenveld from Bali, um, who was inspired by Diana's story, um, is also uh, online with us. Good morning to you both. Thank you for being here. Morning. Morning. Good to have Good you. Having. Good to have you. Um, Diana, let me start with you. Resilient mindset coach, resilience mindset coach. Did that come before or after this? This I'm going to call it, um, it's not an ordeal because you passed it, but this journey, was that before or after? So it was, I was on that path before. It has been enhanced and uh, much more advanced since. So tell me a little bit about this now. You, you t give us a story, the story, the, the Cliff Notes version. You okay. got ill, you were diagnosed with X and then. Okay. For years, I've, I was being treated for asthma, right? Because I had all kinds of lung issues and all those kinds of stuff. Even while being treated for all of those things, all the way to COPD, and but like when I when the COPD thing, they were just managing me towards death because that's what they thought I had. But the resilient mind that I have and that thing, I was still running. I was doing half marathon until 2009 December. I did my half marathon in the grill. Feel a little cute because I thought my time was not great, and I started training for another half marathon quickly. I wanted to do another one before December again, but. I started getting sick and I ended up having to go to the doctor. And when I went to the doctor, they did all different kinds of tests. And that is when they realized that actually I don't have a um, asthma problem. I have a major heart situation. A rare heart situation, a rare condition. Yes, very rare. So, so, so rare that um, normal people have... Um, I have a hole in my heart. That is the big thing. And then normal people have um, superior vena cava on the right side of their heart. But of course, I have to have it on the left side of my heart. And then more than that, everybody have one superior vena cava, but I know I have to have two. So there was a dominant and a non-dominant vena cava. Wow. And wow. of the major situation that they had to deal with. So, so they literally, they put you in surgery. They literally had to remove the heart. To, yes, to yeah, move the heart from the body and um, repair it. And, uh, it, you know, okay, let me just say, the doctors, they said they had to perform a number of daring maneuvers because what they ended up doing is not what they, they planned for. So even removing the heart was not part of the, the original plan until when they realized, when they got in and realized how bad the situation was, that was their that was their option. Those were the options that they had. So that's yeah. incredible. But ten years later, I mean, they gave you two years. Ten years later, you're here. You're running marathons again. I mean, you're probably yes. doing more now than you were doing before. A new lease yes. on life. How do you feel? This picture, right? So, so I came back from surgery in in January, and the half marathon is in December. Which I mean, that's totally ridiculous to even think that I could try that. But I said in my mind, you know what I'm. Let, if I'm going to have two years, let me just start something big now. So I did all that it took to finish the race. And I did finish the race. And yeah, I've been running since. I Up to date, to date, I have done over 30 half marathons. No, like 30. Oh, the, same, the one December was 30. It was my 30th. Fantastic story. Um, Emil, good morning once again. How did you know about this story? So... Diana was actually in one of my courses that I run online and I remember her in the program because we, we had quite a lot of people in the program but her story stuck out to me a lot because she casually said to me that she got told that she had two years to live. Now, the moment you hear that story and she shared with me what happened to her, like she got told that she had a 40% chance of living and then as soon as if she got through that, at best chance that she's going to have two years to live, Everything in my mind literally switched gears. And I'm telling you this because right now we're going through a pandemic and my mindset was like, I'm coaching people all over the world. But 
I was also going through a bit of a funk myself. And the moment I heard Diana's story, automatically getting told you got two years to live, you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to, to fret over your stories of what you're not or waiting till this is over. Or you got to act now. So I was super inspired by her story. And this is obviously how this has come about. What was, you, I know you challenge. would have had a chat with her, but when you heard that, what was the first thing you wanted to say to her? Uh, I was, honestly, for the next three days, I asked myself the same question every single day. If I had two years to live, what would I do differently today? Yeah. No, yeah. I, Absolutely. But mm. what you also did was you made a course out of it called Two Years to Live. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, and it, and it, it actually, yeah, and it did. It inspired me straight away because I thought about that and I thought about people around the world waiting for this pandemic to finish. And I'm like, we can't wait for this. This is a golden opportunity right now to create something that you've never created before. If I said to you, you don't have more than two years, you're not going to wait until the pandemic is finished. You're going to act right, right now. Absolutely. And so many of us, so many of us do this every day. We wait. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. I'll wait until this is done. Ah, oh, it's okay. I'll just press news one more time. Yeah. Dan, Dan I'm really impressed with your resilience, with your strength. But um, what were your thoughts when you heard that, that you had two years to live? Did it, um, how, how okay. low did you get before you brought yourself back up? It was a little interesting even before that, right? So before surgery, when we are preparing and they say that there's a 40% chance of survival, I'm thinking, all right, this is kind of serious. So I had to do my will. I had to organize. But when they say, let me tell you now, I learned this. When doctors say to you, um you need to get your your affairs okay. in order what it really means is you will laugh it to death but they're not going to tell you it like that right so i found that out later so that when they tell me that i'm now planning i'm doing my will i'm organizing all the stuff i needed to do i that that's when i actually started my business because i did not plan that i didn't know i was going to live to come and be a part of the business, much more development, but I wanted registry. So it was actually registered before I went to surgery because I know that the, 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 the principles and what I bring to it, I needed to have that in the world, even if I'm not going to believe it, I'm not going to be alive to be a part of it. So I got some of my friends together and we registered a company. This is a lot of, can you imagine going into a 40% chance? I'm writing my will. I'm organizing, I'm helping my friend to do up my funeral program and doing all the stuff needed. And then I'm registering my business because I'm like much more development, what it is about, I want it to impact the world. So those were the kinds of stuff that I was thinking about. What can I do before I go and dead? So you never thought, boy, I'm gone. Um, um, you cry, you didn't do anything like that? You didn't, you didn't no, get you know, really, I, really depressed? I, uh, no, no, not at all. First, the first time I cried was the morning of uh, a procedure that was supposed to happen prior to surgery. So let me tell you quickly about this. So before they decided that I was going to do open heart surgery, they thought that they had all these bionic things that they could do a procedure where they wouldn't need that, that would they call minimal invasive. So I'm prepared for that surgery. On the morning, it was a Thursday morning, my friends are there, one of my friends, Dr. Arlene Rose, she's going to kill me, but yes, she called me on the phone and she is freaking out the morning of, the, uh, when, of that procedure. So I'm saying, Arlene, what happened? She says, Diana, you cannot do that procedure. If you do it, it's going to be fatal. And she said to me the night before herself and her husband, they were up praying. And what she got in her spirit was that if I did that procedure, I, it was going to be fatal. All right. Sh this is why Arlene is telling me this. I'm on the phone with her. The nurse is right there waiting to put me on the stretcher. And Arlene is telling me, you can't do it, you can't do it. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is crazy. I can't. So anyway, Arlene hung up and the lady wheeled me out. She wheeled me out and she stopped by the, the, by the nurse's station to pick up my docket. And she, I was waiting on the stretcher for about five minutes or so. She came back and she said, Dana, um, the doctor's just called to cancel the procedure. Well, That's the way the it was supposed to work. That's the first time I cried. And yeah. when they came to explain it to me, they said to me, Dino, last night, same last night when Arlene was operating, mm -hmm. last night, six top surgeons at Jackson's Memorial were up 
going over my case and at 1 30 a.m they decided that it's gone it's too too risky they can't do that hence open heart surgery god is so working was, sister god, god is, is it's all god working is good. God um, is good. emil how does it what does the course entail we have to go shortly but i'm curious two years to live tell me a little bit about the, the course in summary so the course is a 30-day challenge and it's to really to get people out of their stories their excuses and to get them in action so we do this 30-day challenge and we move through your fears and your unlim your limiting beliefs then we move into trust how to build self-trust from the ground up then we move into removing uh starting discipline and focus because there's so much distraction in this world and then we move into your money mindset and your purpose. And we finished with enrollment because every day we're enrolling people in who we are. And if we're not doing that, then we're literally just um, surviving, we're just yes. in that space of, yeah. Yes. Dan, what's the word, no? no. How are you, no? What are they saying, no, everything is okay? You know, I'm good, I'm running, hello. I'm, I have talent, so, so during surgery, I lost some lung function. So I'm, I'm living on reduced lung capacity, but my mindset is wake up and live. Mm. There's much more. And no matter what, keep moving forward. That's my mindset. So it's not going to be like all rosy all the time, but that is my mindset. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And very and that's, inspiring. That, that's the name of a Bob Marley song, by the way. Wake up and live. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the song that is now used on Emil's course. Ah. So you, yeah. So yeah. when the, when we're on break, we are like, wake up and live, young. Yes, then I, <laughs> Diana, has sing it out loud. Fantastic, my <laughs> friend, and I hope you start um, just even singing and make two songs and all kind of stuff. It's an amazing story, and I thank you both so much for speaking with us this morning. All right? Stay safe. Thanks for having us. Stay yeah. safe. Resilience wow. Mindset Coach, Dan wow, Morgan wow, wow. Burgess, and Emotional Intelligence Coach, Emil Steenveld. Every day Whew. above what ground a story. is a blessing. What a story. What a story. But I, I mean, and you can't imagine somebody to say, well, you're soon dead. Can't. Me feel that alone and I kill me. Just, just, just well, there are actually some people who, who their deaths are hastened, hastened because by... Because they hear them kind of stuff. those kind of prognosis. Yeah. But man, Fantastic. you guys are amazing. Fantastic. Diana, keep inspiring. Fantastic. I Fantastic. want to talk to you another time on another show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll Fantastic. take a break on Smile. We'll be right back Absolutely with more. Amazing.